troubleshooting. You you find the, the problem and then you think about every possible solution and every way that something could go wrong. And by thinking about these things proactively before you actually run into a problem, then it'll help you to solve the problems faster once you actually get to one. All right. Hey, mate, you having trouble getting playback in your Pro Tools session? Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. But watch this video anyway. You just might learn something. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyWayne.com. And if you don't know yet, this channel is all about helping you record and mix better and faster and apparently troubleshoot too. <laughs> Troubleshooting is a huge part of being an audio engineer. You have to identify problems and come up with solutions to those problems. Matter of fact, that is exactly what audio engineering is. So hit a like on this video if you're here to learn how to troubleshoot some problems, all right? Um, one common problem that we often face as new engineers or even seasoned engineers, you might just run it into one of these cases to where your playback, you're just not getting playback from your audio signals in your session. And this could be for many, many reasons, but we're going to break down a list of a few of the common problems that you might be having on why you're not getting playback uh, in your session. Some of them will seem really easy, but if you don't think about it, if you don't know, then you just might be pulling your hair out for no good reason. So let's go ahead and take a look at this session that I have um, and see what some common issues or errors might be that could cause the playback not to play back. All right. So let's go ahead and jump off into my Pro 2 session. One thing that you will notice here in this session is that right now I am using <laughs> dark mode. <laughs> I did this just for y'all, man, because, you know, I like the way Pro 2s look. And this right now is kind of like, what the hell is going on, man? Matter of fact, let me even get these tracks some color real quick because, you know, all this blackness is just making my eyes go crazy. But anyway, um, if you need to know real quick, man, because I'm always just helping y'all out, just a side note, man. Drop down a comment if you like the side notes. <laughs> uh, to actually enable or disable dark mode, you do this from the preferences menu. You can go to the setup menu and choose preferences um, or to the Pro Tools menu and choose preferences like I just did. And then you see the UI theme. Right now it's on dark. Um, I typically will have it on classic, but we're going to rock with this mode for a little bit. All right. Um, we just hit OK. And you do have to close your Pro Tools, actually quit the application and reopen it after changing it for those changes to take effect. That's neither here nor there. One of the first things <clears throat> that you need to look for if you're having trouble with playback in your session is to verify that the track itself is not muted. OK, now. I know that seems like an obvious one, but there is a mute indicator right on the track in the edit window and also the mix window. That M, if it's lit orange like that, that means that that particular track is muted. Another good way to tell is that right here at the top of the edit window, right in this little main counter section, you have a mute indicator button. All right, now this will just simply tell you if any tracks in your session are muted because you could potentially be trying to hear a hidden track. You see how I hit that track, but it's still muted. It's still active in the session, okay? So uh, muting of a track could obviously be one way that the track won't give you a playback. Another way that the track may not play back is that if you have any other tracks soloed in your session, all right? And again, we have a indicator here that some track is soloed in our session. This is especially useful if you have a lot of tracks in your session. And the dope thing is that if you want to quickly clear the solos, you can actually click right here on this solo indicator to clear out any solos that you may have in your session, okay? You'll, you'll be able to tell that your track, you see how the mute button goes slightly uh, 
Orange there is kind of like a soft mute. It's basically soft muting. That's what happens when you solo a track. It mutes every other track. Um, so you can tell that right there. You can obviously just find it and click it or just click on that little indicator to take all the solos off of any tracks that might be in your session. No output seems to be another uh, reason or the wrong output, right? Um, you could go to the track's output and change it. Maybe I change this to line five and six, and I have an output, but if I play this, we're not getting anything, right? So even though the track is assigned to output, you could have the absolutely wrong output or no output at all. Um, and this seems like, you know, again, one of those things like, damn, I should know whether the track has output, but it could be hard to see, especially in the edit window to where you can actually hide the IO section like I just did there. All right. Um, in the mix window, you can even hide the IO section here as well. So it could literally be impossible for you to visually see how, um, whether you have the tracks output routed correctly. And depending on how complex your setup is in your studio, you may need to change the outputs or, you know, route to a special output um, based on your workflow, especially when you're receiving sessions from other people and you're working on sessions that somebody else might have started. Maybe that output is being routed to a bus or maybe it's some analog output that you just don't have access to. Um, double check the output of that track to make sure that it's going to the place you want. The next thing that I'll point out, just because it's kind of obvious to me right now, is to make sure that your playback cursor is not beyond uh, the audio, right? If you see right now, my playback cursor has gone beyond the audio. So if I hit play right now, it's going to start from a place that I'm not even looking at. And if you're only in the mix window or something for, for whatever reason, or you're zoomed out, or you just don't understand how the playback cursor works, the playback cursor is this solid line that's going through your session as it's playing, right? And it is often linked to the edit cursor to wherever I click with my selector tool and create that edit insertion point. That's what it's called there. The playback cursor will start from there. The play, the playback will start from that location wherever I click with my edit cursor. Now, again, here's another tip to make sure that that's actually active for you. And that is to make sure that link timeline and edit selection is enabled. Here's that little button right here beneath the magnifying glass, beneath the zoomer tool. You could also go up to the options menu and make sure that link timeline and edit selection is turned on. If you don't have that turned on, let's just turn it off and see. I can make a edit selection or actually place my edit cursor somewhere, right? And when I hit play, you see that the edit cursor is here in the audio, but the playback cursor is not. The playback uh uh, whenever you hit play, it follows the timeline selection. So up here, whatever you have timeline selected or wherever your cursor is in the timeline, right? So there's two types of cursors. If you're not familiar with this in Pro Tools, then this is, uh, you need to really look into taking my Pro Tools certification course where you can learn all in depth about using the, uh, the different cursors and just learn everything there is to learn about Pro Tools, okay? Um, I'll be starting up another course very soon, but shoot me an email if you're interested in, in joining the course, okay? Well, I was getting back to my point, right? That by default, the timeline and the edit selection cursors are linked. That way, whatever I'm focused on here on my edit selection will also be mirrored in the timeline. If that is not turned on, then you could have a separate timeline selection and a separate edit selection. And whenever you play or record your session, it's going to play from the timeline selection and not the edit selection. So make sure that that is enabled for you. All right, now let's go back to one of the more obvious and easy uh, reasons why you might not be getting playback. And one of those include that your speakers may be physically turned off, okay? Uh, I've been down this road, so don't be embarrassed, right? You plan, you got the session pulled up, you done checked your outputs, no tracks are muted, nothing is soloed. Did you actually check that the speakers are turned on? 
right? Especially uh, if they don't have any lights or indicators. Most of them nowadays will have some type of LED light right on the front so you can see uh, exactly. But a lot of uh, studio monitors don't have any uh, power indicators on the front. Double check that your uh, studio monitors are actually powered up. And then on the side of that, make sure that if you have a monitor controller or whatever it is, that you actually have the level on the monitor controller or the output going to the studio monitors turned up and that there's not any mutes or anything happening there as well. And if you're using any like headphone amps or something like that, make sure those are also um, uh, connected and powered on and functioning properly if you're not getting playback. OK, remember troubleshooting, you you find the, the problem and then you think about every possible solution in every way that something could go wrong. And by thinking about these things proactively before you actually run into a problem, then it'll help you to solve the problems faster once you actually get to one. All right. The next uh, easy thing is going to be a fader down, man. Like, come on. Like, really? OK. <laughs> like, again, if I'm working in this uh edit window i'll never be able to tell that the fader was down until i go over to the mix window and now in this latest version of pro tools you can actually hide the faders and meters for whatever reason um but uh yeah just make sure that your faders are not down that could be another uh, reason why you're just not hearing it and in this case this track don't have any output Another big one that really gets me going uh, is is the count off, right? So you can see right here at the top of my edit window toolbar during, in my transport control sections, there's a little option to dis, uh, to enable and disable a count off. Now, depending on your count off settings, this may or may not affect your playoff. Let's go ahead and double click right here where it says uh, two bars. If we do that, it'll open up our click and count off options. So right now, my uh, click is set. Actually, I'm sorry. The the part we are need to look at for the count off needs to be right here for count off only during record. I like my count off to only be turned on during recording. If I turn this off and then somehow my count off gets enabled, and especially if I don't have a click track in my session, then I hit play. The count off uh, button starts flashing. But the session does not play right away. It's on a delay, right? And depending on however much uh, my count off value is, that's how long it's going to take for the session to play. So either disable the count off or double click on the uh, count off value here and to open up your click and count off options. Another way to get to that is to go to the setup menu and choose click count off. This is another way to open up this little dialog box here and make sure that your click count off is set for only during recording and that you only enable the click count off whenever you actually need to use it. You could also be facing some more serious problems and have some real IO setup issues. So uh, one way that you want to troubleshoot this is go to the setup menu, choose IO, right? And if you're not getting signal after you're going through all those things and, and you just feel like there may be some other issue going on, maybe the ins and outputs paths are not being routed correctly. One thing that I would like to do, especially if you get in a session that, that again, someone else started on another system, you brought it over to your system, uh, and maybe a template or anything like that, the IO setup, the routing could be very different from the routing that you need on your system. So one thing that I would typically do is come in here um, into my IO setup, especially the output page, since that's what we focusing on right now is making sure that we're getting the output. Select all the uh, outputs. You can do that by hitting Command A or Control A if you're on a PC, right? Delete the paths. We're going to just delete everything and then hit the default button. OK, now, before you do that, make sure that you have the proper playback engine set up as well, because it's going to default the I.O. setups to whatever playback engine you have. So first, you will want to go to setup playback engine. Make sure that the appropriate playback engine that you actually are using, whatever interface or sound card, sound device that you are using is actually selected as the playback engine. So since I'm using my Universal Audio Thunderbolt and that's where I wanna hear sound out of, uh, that is the playback engine that I select. 
And now Pro Tools knows that if I go to my I.O. setup and default the I.O. setup paths, it will give me the default paths that correspond with the playback engine or the interface that I have selected, okay? Then I can hit OK. Now, after you do that, you might have to go back and reset your paths if anything has changed or they've been relabeled. But then once you set your output path again and make sure your faders are up and everything else, you should be good to go. And just like any DAW, Pro Tools is a software. It could just be tripping out. Your computer could just be tripping out. If none of this works, shut it down and reopen it, all right? I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful in getting you to troubleshoot any playback issues that you may be having in your session, all right? Uh, check out the website, wavywayne.com, where you can find a whole lot more information and tools to help you to record and mix better and faster. Be dope. Thank you.